All right, last up from the review chapter R, we've got radicals. Um, I guess we'll just, we'll just start off with a definition, right? What do I mean by a radical? Well, I mean an expression that I'm sure you've worked with before, but something like, uh, something like that, right? The nth root of A. And we'll just, we'll make this definition, we'll define this to be A to the 1 over N, which we worked with in the last section, right? So the nth root of A, you can think of this as just being another symbol for A to the 1 over N. Um, uh, I'll just note one thing. If n is even, so if this is like a square root, uh, the inside has to be non-negative, right? So note, a has got to be bigger than or equal to zero if n is even. Otherwise, it just doesn't make any sense. All right, so nothing too fancy here. Uh, this is just an alternate symbol for a to the 1 over n. It's the nth root of a. So, for example, uh, square root of 9. Right? Well, we'd usually write that as 9 to the 1 half. And square root of 9 is, of course, 3. Uh, fifth root of 32. Right? So that's 32 to the 1 fifth. Well, fifth root of 32, what do you multiply by itself to get uh, 5 times to get 32 is 2. Okay? And I'll make one more note here. Uh, let's see, a to the m over n, right? Remember, I can write this in several different ways. I can think of this as a to the 1 over n to the m. So that's equal to the nth root of a to the power of m, right? a to the 1 over n is the nth root of a. But I can also write this as a to the m to the 1 over n. So that would be uh, a to the m on the inside. This would be the nth root of a to the m. Right? So both of these expressions, they look very different from each other. They're both equal to a to the m over n. So these two expressions, these two, they're both equal to each other. Right, so keep this in mind. Right? Keep this in mind that if you've got a power on the inside of an nth root, you can actually just take the nth root of a, the base, and then raise everything to the power n. Right, that's an allowable operation. So we'll just go through all the properties and then do a few examples working with them. So properties of, of radicals. Right, number one, uh, let's actually skip through a few that I have written here. We'll jump straight down to, to here. The nth root of a times the nth root of b. All right, well, what does that mean? That means a to the 1 over n times b to the 1 over n. And remember, an expression like this, I can write this as a b to the 1 over n. I right, think in the properties from the, from the exponent section, we actually started here and broke it up into this. But uh, you can start here and combine them back together, right? So what's this expression on the right? Well, that's the nth root of a, b. So you can combine roots together, right? If I've got an nth root times an nth root, I can just write as a single nth root of uh, the product of the two, the two inside numbers or expressions. Uh, two. Similarly, nth root of a over nth root of b, I can write this as just a giant nth root of a over b. Very similar to the, to the uh, property above. And last but not least, repeated roots. Let's say I've got the nth root of the nth root of a. Well, remember what this means, right? This is a to the 1 over n to the 1 over n. And if you multiply these together, what do you get? You get a to the 1 over m n. Or, if you break this up slightly differently, you could think of this as a to the 1 over n, oops, 1 over m to the 1 over n. So this, so these nth roots, when you, when you write them like this, you can write this as uh, a to the mnth root, right, m times m or 
you could actually change the order if you wanted to. And though this middle expression looks by far the nicest, this would be the nth root of a times, or the nth root of the nth root of a. There we go. And using these properties, we'll just go through and we'll simplify a few expressions. So, let's see, we'll simplify, simplify a, let's do the square root of 27. Well, uh, there isn't a whole number that when you multiply it by itself you get 27, right? But what I could do is I could think of this as the square root of 9 times 3, right? It's 9 times 3 is 27, and now I'm allowed to break up square roots. I could write this as the square root of 9 times the square root of 3. And the reason I did that is because the square root of 9 is a nice whole number, right? Square root of 9 is just 2. So this is 2 root 3. And most people would agree that that is indeed simplified, right? It, well, simplified in the sense of it looks prettier. It looks prettier than the square root of 27. It's just 2 times root 3. How about this one? Square root of 288 times m to the fifth. Well, here I'm looking for actual squares, right? So, again, 288, well, that's 2 times 144, and 144 is 12 squared. So, I'm going to write this as square root of 2 times 144. And square root of m to the fifth, well, uh, I can't... I can't square root m to the fifth very nicely, but what I could do is write this as m to the fourth times m. Right? Four plus one is five, so m to the fourth times m. And the reason I did that is because now I can break this up. Okay, so this is square root of two times square root of 144. That's just 12 times the square root of m to the fourth times the square root of m. And so what am I left with? Well, square root of 144, I'll write this out front, that's 12. Uh, square root of m to the fourth, that's m to the fourth to the one half. If you multiply those exponents together, you just get m squared. So 12m squared. And in fact, I'm going to recombine these two square roots back together. I'll write this as square root of 2m. And again, I'd say that's simplified much nicer than the original expression. Square root of x squared minus 2x plus 1. Well, again, my properties of simplification only have to do with uh, square roots of products, right? I mean, square roots of things multiply together. Square roots of sums or, or, or differences, I can't do anything with that. So what I'm hoping is I can write this as a product maybe by factoring. And indeed, this does factor. This factors perfectly as uh, I need two numbers that multiply together to give positive 1, add together to give minus 2. They are minus 1 and minus 1. So x minus 1 squared. All right, so what's this equal to? Well, square root of x minus 1 squared is just x minus 1. Right, the square root and the square cancel each other out. It's 2 times 1 half. Or is it equal to x minus 1? Well, it's actually not. It's very close. Right? And here's the catch. The catch of square rooting is something that's squared. Right? So think of this. If I take the square root of 3 squared, what do I get? Square root of 9 is just 3. Right? The square root is understood to always be the positive root. So, uh, square root of 3 squared, square root of 9 is positive 3. But what if I did this? What if I did the square root of minus 3 squared? Okay. Square root of minus 3 squared, well, that's still square root of 9, which is, once again, 3. So it's not true that I always end up with the original expression in here. What is true 
is that uh, all I've done is I've forgotten about the fact that I started with a minus, right? So the square root in general, the square root of a squared is not equal to a, it's actually equal to the absolute value of a. So in this case, the square root of x minus 1 is technically the absolute value of x minus 1. And you do have to be careful. When you square something and then you square root it, you forget about whether it was originally positive or negative. So it's, it's technically the absolute value. Uh, last but not least, we'll just talk about rationalization really quickly. Rationalization. And uh, hmm, what do I want to do? So what is, I'll teach this by example. How about that? So example A. I've got 2 over root x. You might have learned at some point in, uh, in high school or some generally just some lower level algebra class that for some reason it's bad to always have a square root on the bottom, right? I don't know why this is taught. Uh, there's nothing wrong with this expression. It's totally fine. But for algebraic reasons, quite often you want to get rid of the square root on the bottom, right? So this is what rationalization is. It's, it's a way to, to make sure that I don't have square roots down here. Right? And what am I going to do? Well, I'm just going to multiply top and bottom by root x. Right? So if I multiply top and bottom by root x, root x times root x is just x. So now my denominator is what's called rationalized. Right? Because it's, it's no longer a square root down there, but I do have a square root up top instead. All right, so we just changed the form. Um, how about this one? This one's harder. 3 minus, uh, 3 over 1 minus root 2. All right, so again, I have a square root down here. I don't want square roots in the denominator for whatever reason. What do you do? Well, this is where rationalization comes into play. The idea is that you multiply this expression, you multiply top and bottom by the conjugate of this expression. And the conjugate is you just change the sign in the middle. So if I have a minus here, I'm going to make it a plus. So I'm going to multiply the top by 1 plus the square root of 2. And I can't just go ahead and multiply things like that, just it'll change the value. But if I multiply by 1 plus root 2 and divide, plus, divide by 1 plus root 2, now I've just multiplied by 1, right? So this hasn't changed the value of the expression. So this is rationalization. I've multiplied top and bottom by the conjugate of this expression. The conjugate is changing this middle sign from a minus to a plus. And the reason I did that, well, up top I've got 3 times 1 plus root 2. What do I have down below? I could FOIL this out, or the other thing you could realize is that, hey, this is actually just a difference of two squares factorization. Right. So what are my two squares? Well, my two squares are 1 squared minus root 2 squared. So bottom, you can either see that if you want or, or, or not. Let me, let's, let's see, this is 1 squared minus root 2 squared. So you can see this is a difference of two squares if you want. If not, just, uh, just FOIL it out. FOIL it out and you get to the same place. Right. So this is... Uh, 3 times 1 plus root 2 over 1 minus 2. 1 minus 2 is minus 1. And it's kind of ugly to just divide by minus 1. I'll just write the minus up top. Minus 3 times 1 plus root 2. All right, so that's, uh, that's rationalization. We'll do a couple more examples. Here we've only rationalized by the, or we've rationalized the denominator, so I'll do one more in the denominator, and we'll have a one in the numerator. So this is c, uh, 5 over square root of x minus square root of y. Pause the video if you want, try this one on your own. I'm going to keep going with it. Uh, what do I want to do? I want to multiply top and bottom by the conjugate of the denominator here, because I don't want square roots on the bottom. So multiply by square root of x plus square root of y over square root of x plus square root of y. 
What do I have up top? We've got 5 times root x plus root y. Down below, what do I have? Well, this is a difference of two squares. What are my squares? It's root x squared minus root y squared. So on the bottom, I've just got x minus y. I suppose I've lost my original expression with all this work, but we've just we've taken this expression and transformed it to this equivalent expression where I don't have square roots on the bottom. And typically, people rationalize the, uh, the denominator, right? They get rid of the square roots on the bottom, but you can do the exact same trick with the numerator. Uh, how about this one? 4 plus root x over 16 minus x. Right? Maybe for some reason I want to get rid of the square root up top. So I do the exact same trick. I multiply top and bottom by the conjugate of the top now. Right, so we'll multiply by 4 minus root x over 4 minus root x. And I'm going to throw some extra brackets on here to make sure everything is distributing correctly. What do I have up top? Again, it's a difference of two squares. It's 4 squared minus root x squared. So it's 16 minus x. All over 16 minus x all over, uh, what do I have down here? I've got 16 minus x times 4 minus root x. Well, this is actually really nice, because what's happening up top? Well, I've got 16 minus x times everything, right? You can think of it as 16 minus x times, times 1, if you want. And on the bottom, I've got 16 minus x times everything. So these guys cancel out. And that leaves me with 1 over 4 minus root x. So this original expression turned into this, just by this, this trick of multiplying top and bottom by the conjugate. Um, yeah, I think we'll stop here. Thanks.